Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, guys. Thank you very much for staying with us. We hope you are still learning a lot from our intervention here with differential calculus. Thanks to Julian, thanks to Philippa, and most of all, thanks to Liberty for making this show possible. This wouldn't be uh, possible if it wasn't for Liberty. Thank you very much for that. So we are still going to continue uh, taking your questions of, on, on differential calculus, but remember to send us uh, questions on analytical geometry for our shows next week. So please send those and you stand a chance to win awesome prizes by just doing that. We are going to go to a question that was sent to us by uh, Riyadeh Bukha. Let's go and check out that question. Hello, 10 for Education. My name is Riyadeh Bukha and I would like help with this equation. It says find the derivatives of functions in calculus and here it is. Thank you so much. I really hope you help me on this one. I've been struggling to get it right. Alrighty, alrighty. Very nice question. A very, very nice question. Now, before we even start analyzing the question, guys, I feel like sometimes we rob you because you don't always get the opportunity to see the questions clearly. So I want us to go to the screen and check the question together before I start analyzing the question and helping you to understand how do you really unpack this question. So let's go and look at it. It says to us that we need to find the derivative of the following function. There's a function that is given to us, which is f of x equals x plus 1 uh, into the square root of x minus 1 into 1 over x plus 4. All right, so that is basically what we need to calculate. The key word there, which is what you always need to keep in mind, is the word derivative. So we have to find the derivative. And, and as Julian was saying now, now, there's actually different ways of finding the derivative. You can do the first principle, or you can actually use the power rule to find the derivative. Now, this question did not specify. So if they don't specify, you're simply going to use your power rule because it's quite easier and quicker. And beyond that, it will be very hideous and uh, complicated task to find the derivative of this thing if you had to use use um, um, first principle to find the derivative. So let's go and look at this. Um, one thing that you need to keep in mind is for you to be able to find the derivative, you cannot be able to find the derivative using the power rule while you still have got sets like the square root of x there or your functions multiplied like the way they are. According to the power rule, we just need all our terms to be in the form coefficient x to the power of some exponent because then when we derive the derivative then will become the exponent multiplied by the coefficient so you'll have n a to the and then x on the exponent we simply going to remove one so you're actually going to sit with n minus one so our task is to firstly remove the brackets and also remove any sets that we have remove this fraction here you cannot have your variable of interest as a denominator we need to move it up and then um, try to use it to find the derivative now one thing i need you to keep in mind while i'm about to do this is the laws of exponents it's important for you to remember the laws of exponents and i'm going to highlight only two of them that we need here the first one one is when you're multiplying same basis, if I do x to the power of a multiplied by x to the power of b, when you're multiplying same basis, we simply need to add the exponents. So this is going to be x to the power a plus b. That is the first rule of exponent that I need you guys to have in your mind. So that's one thing that we are going to use here. The second thing is when you have something like the square root of x here, it is going to simply change and become x to the power 1 over 2. So the square root of x can be written as x to the power 1 over 2. Very important. Now, let's come here and see what we can do with this function. f of x is basically x plus 1 into the square root of x minus 1 into 1 over x plus 4. Now, I don't know about you, but when you're multiplying, it doesn't matter which terms you multiply first. If you've got three terms, you can decide which two you want to multiply first. Multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter who is multiplied with who first. You're still going to end up with the same answer. Now, I don't like the set, the square root of x. I want to do that multiplication last. So I'm going to multiply the first term and the last term first and find out what the answer is and then multiply by the set part when I'm done with those two. So I want to move this x plus 1 closer to um, 1 over x. This 1 over x can be written as x to the power minus 1 plus 4. So these are the ones that I want to execute first. So the square root of x will come here as square root x minus 1. Let's see what will happen when we now apply our foil here to multiply. So this by that 
let's see what will happen. X times um, X to the power minus 1. Remember, there's an exponent 1 here, even if it's not written. So when you're multiplying the same basis, you're adding the exponent. So 1 plus minus 1 is simply going to give us X to the power of 0. And then if I do this by the other one, it's actually going to become 4X to the power of 1. When you multiply plus 1 and X to the minus 1, it's going to give you positive X to the minus 1. 1 times 4 will simply give us a plus 4 in brackets, which we can then simplify further. I'm again leaving this. I will actually deal with this much later. So let's continue and see anything to the power 0, except uh, 0 to the power 0 can always be 1. So you are sitting with 1 plus 4x plus x to the minus 1 plus 4 right into this is the square root of x minus 1. And when you add like terms here, 1 plus 4 is 5. So I'll actually have 4x plus x to the minus 1 plus 5 into, now I'm changing the square root of x and rewriting that as x to the power half minus 1. So if you simplify further to try and do our um, multiplication to get rid of all these brackets, 4x times x to the half, you multiply and you add exponents. So 1 on this exponent and 1 on that one is going to give us 4x to the power 1 plus half, which is basically 3 over 2. 4x times minus 1 is going to give us minus 4x x to the minus 1 times this will just become positive x to the power minus a half because minus 1 plus half is actually minus a half. x to the minus 1 times that will actually give us x to the minus 1. 5 times x to the half will give us 5x to the power half and 5 times minus 1 will actually give us minus 5. So if I simplify further here to see what we can do, well, we do have our terms now in the form coefficient base exponent coefficient base exponent. We are now ready to find the derivative. So let's go ahead and find the derivative. You find the derivative by saying the derivative of this function is the exponent multiplied by the coefficient. So 3 over 2 times 4 will simply give us 6. x to the power 3 over 2 minus 1, which will actually give you an answer of a half. And then here we've got an exponent of 1. So 1 times minus 4 will give you minus 4 x to the power of 0, which is going to eventually become a 1, so we actually ignore that. So minus half here times the coefficient of 1 will give you minus a half. x to the power minus 1 minus 1 will give you minus 3 over 2. Negative times neg negative here is going to be positive. x to the power minus 1 minus 1 is going to give you minus 2. Half of 5 will give you 5 over 2 x to the power half minus uh, 1, which is going to be minus half. And the derivative of a constant, as always, is equal to 0. Now, if we clean this further, we're actually going to um, have 6 x to the power 1 over 2. Remember, we just want to get rid of the negative exponents. So we take them to denominators if you want to remove negative exponents. So this will become minus 1 over 2 times x to the power 3 over 2 plus 1 over x to the power of 2 plus 5 over 2x to the power 1 over 2. So it is a very nice question that actually requires you to apply your skills when it comes to uh, using the power rule. It's definitely going to be in all your exams, June exams, preliminary exams, as well as the final exam. A very nice question indeed. Thank you very much for sending us that question. We're now going to go to an ad break. After that ad break, Philippa is going to come in and take another question. So stay with us.